In the Tawa region, southern Niger, the town of Ilela, located 379 kilometers from the capital Niamey, stands as a symbol of the fight against harmful practices such as child marriage. The fight is led by the chief of the canton, Yakuba Habibu Umani. His commitment is unprecedented in the fight against child marriage and home birth. He is very respected and the people listen to him. When his drummer calls a meeting, men and women answer the call immediately. We meet with him in his palace at Masarawata Sarkin Adar's chiefdom during a meeting on the issue of early marriage. Yakuba Abibu Umani is at the head of at least 200 village chiefs who depend on his canton. They were called upon when he published two circulars in 2017. The first one prohibits the marriage of girls before the age of 18, and the second one concerns births at home. We've got a huge number of early marriages where the young girls have shown great hostility, and we have tried to find out why. And we realized it's because they are unwilling to get married. Regarding the training, I think that's very important because uh, thanks to it, I knew about the obstetrical fistula. As we realized it happens to them because they are too young for marriages, we said why sending them to early marriages? Afterwards, we decided to make some campaigns and a series of visits in some hospitals. On the spot, even the parents of the bride have run away, as well as those of the groom. That's the reason why I have decided to call upon the populations and launch such a campaign. And hopefully we have succeeded in convincing all of them. From now on, all those who don't comply with this rule will have serious problems. The informed populations have, for the most part, complied with these circulars, which have enabled them to push back the age of girls who enter marriage and to annul child marriage. There hasn't been any hostile reaction because we have summoned both families. We take them in front of their own responsibilities and explain them the different risks faced by the girls who get married from 11 to 16 years. And then we explain to them what the different options they have are. For example, waiting until the girl is 7 to 18. And at the age, the girl is capable of choosing her own husband. That's simple. There are also some men after giving up often ask to be repaid what they spent as a dowry. In that case, they get reimbursed. Sometimes I myself have to complete the money from my pocket. However, others may just withdraw without asking to be repaid the amount which is spent. In the Umani community, the fight against child marriage is a family affair. Indeed, it is also led by the sister of the chief of Canton, Mrs. Aishatou Habibu Umani Betty. She has had to say no to two marriages. The first one was when she was 13 years old. I refused the first marriage and I told them that I wanted to continue going to school. Fortunately, I had my parents' support, so I was able to get out of it and continue going to school. For the second marriage, well, my father didn't even know about it. I was in lower high school level and I was practicing basketball at the time. And my uncles, they had taken the money and one Friday I came from the Tilaberi Young Girls School and I received a letter. As we used to receive our letters on Friday, I was very delighted to have a letter from my elder sister. But then I saw that it said to me that they had received a dowry in my name and they didn't even know about it and they were asking me if I had arranged for that. I burst out in tears. I tried to borrow money from my friends and then I went immediately to Niamey. 
Fortunately, one of my uncles uh, supported me. He paid for the tickets and I was able to come to my village. Uh, I arrived at around midnight and I found the chief leader and all the other people who were there. I told them that I, I'm here to ask you to give back the money because I won't marry. I didn't want to miss out on 12 years of school and I wanted to continue my studies. Former Minister of Secondary Education and current President of the Regulatory Council for Electronic Communications and Post, she also runs a social educational center for young people thanks to her NGO, Der Lelawal. I can't let this phenomenon destroy the girls' chance to go to school. That's the reason why I've created this center. I have an NGO which has been running since 1996. I had studied about education and environmental affairs, but at one point I told myself that I should do something useful to the community. I should be able to help young girls to go and stay at school, as we have a very weak schooling rate for girls and with a lot of early marriages. Imagine that when I was young, we were about 58 young girls, but I was the only one to reach college. So now when I meet with my fellow girls with whom I was friends at the time, I feel bad because because they weren't as lucky as I was. Because in other circumstances, they would have had the opportunity to go to uh, relays or um, to go to school. Now I want their own children to have the chance that they didn't have. Silence must be broken. And thanks to our collective efforts, young girls will go and stay at school. It will enable them to be useful to the community in the future. Their commitment was recently praised by the country office of the United Nations Population Fund and by the First Lady of Niger as a sponsor of the fight against obstetric fistula, the fight against cancer and the African maternal mortality reduction campaign. Niger has one of the highest population growth rates in the world, with 21,546,595 inhabitants, increasing at a rate of 3.9% per year. Its population is extremely young. Those under 15 represent more than half, or 51.7%. The fact that the Nigerian population is so young is because of the high fertility in the country, which is at six children on average per woman. The high proportion of child marriages, with 28% who are married before the age of 15 and 76% before the age of 18, the high fertility of young people, 14% of total fertility rates, but also the low use of family planning, at 12.3%, are not without consequences for the health of mothers and children. Indeed, the maternal mortality rate in Niger is 535 deaths per 100,000 live births in 2012, and the infant child mortality rate is 81 per 1,000 live births. The consequences are that women aren't empowered at all. Today, as you know, 65% of the population is under 25, more than 50 are under 15, and the majority of which is constituted of young girls. And they haven't been to school because with the high birth rate, the government doesn't have the means to build enough schools for all of them. There are no means either to build enough health centers despite all the efforts which have been made during the last 10 to 15 years. That's not sufficient because, like I said, with this high demographic growth, the government has to do three or four times more than he is doing currently. And as you know, in the sub-regional countries, we don't have the means to do that. So necessarily, to reach what is called the demographic dividend, we need to invest. Invest on the youth, on health and on education. And investing in health means acting in the sense of decreasing the demographic growth. Among the eight regions in Niger, Maradi, Zinder and Tawa are the ones with the highest population growth rate. Yet these three regions 
have also the weakest indicators for the use of reproductive health services. In order to allow the people of Niger, and more particularly in the Tahua region, to enjoy their reproductive health rights and meet their specific needs, a campaign to reposition family planning, to strengthen the fight against maternal mortality, for the promotion of schooling and keeping the girls at school, was initiated by the UNFPA, the United Nations Population Fund. This is the third edition of this campaign, following those recently held in the regions of Maradi and Difa. This communication campaign has as an objective to bring behavioral and social change towards populations in order to accelerate the demographic transition and the demographic dividend capture in Niger. I want to remind you that our country is under the pressure of a fast demographic growth, which is at about 3.9% a year. This high birth rate is due to the reproductive behavior of our population. The socio-economic consequences are huge and rank from an exponential increase of population's needs in terms of health, education, employment, nutrition, communication, housing, water, electricity, transport facilities, etc., etc. You'll agree with me that such a situation affects the government's economic provisions and strongly impacts our development efforts. That's the reason why we need to change our behaviors. We need a strong parental communication so that our demographic growth will meet the level of development of our resources. The new campaign aims at promoting family planning and the provision of reproductive services. It also relates to the fight against gender-based violence STIs, HIV, AIDS, as well as the advocacy for the education of girls. This campaign allows me also to mention traditional and religious leaders' commitment for all their efforts, thanks to their advocacy and the concrete actions they undertake for the cause. As an example, I can list some organizations for people's contribution in taking in charge assisted deliveries and health evacuations, conciliation actions and decision-making processes which have resulted in the postponing or the annulment of child marriage. I'm convinced that these actions for maternal mortality reduction as well as women and girls' empowerment will keep going and that in Tahua, like in Difa and Maradi, the movement will come out to a satisfaction of the needs in terms of maternal and reproductive health, in terms of girls' schooling and abolition of early marriages. Within the framework of this campaign and with a view to promote women empowerment, a total of 260 mills, 260 motor pumps, 50 sewing machines, tons of seeds and 500 tons of food were mobilized by the FAO, the Organization for Food and Agriculture, China and Turkey, to support vulnerable women and girls through the Tatali Iya Foundation of the First Lady of Niger. We have provided a lot of agricultural materials such as motor pumps, forage and agricultural seeds for small gardening because we think that women are key to arrive at food security. For us, the support from the foundation is to accompany them in terms of food and nutritional security. I am insisting on the world nutrition because, as you know, there are a lot of malnourished children in Niger and that's important for their future development. That's why we are supporting the foundation and we are very happy that they are making this kind of efforts which contributes to the socio-economic development of Niger. The First Lady also visited the safe spaces a concept initiated by the UNFPA in partnership with the Nigerian government and NGOs. 
In addition to teaching literacy, these safe spaces enable vulnerable young girls to learn about the different aspects of life and to acquire a trade, and this during nine months to a year and a half. Young girls are enrolled between the ages of 10 and 19. The initiative is strongly encouraged by the national community. Almost 70 or 90 percent of young girls come from vulnerable families. In addition to that, 20 to 30 percent of them are orphans, either by their father or mother, or sometimes even both. That's the reason why they are here. Most of them have dropped out of school to come and register here because their parents don't have the means to maintain them at school. Additionally, most of them have never been schooled. The Tawa region has 64 safe spaces, including four in the city of Tawa. Niger has at least 400 of the like. Statistics show that a total of 132,000 girls have been trained through these free learning centers. Thanks to this opportunity, the lives of many have changed. One of the residents of these safe spaces is Maria Aboubakar, 21, mother of three children. Married at the age of 14 and without having any job skills, she is now studying to become a seamstress. It was my husband who signed me up here because I didn't do anything in the past. I was a housewife and I was unskilled. My husband understood that here, women are taught a trade. That's why he signed me up. I'm not even talking about the future at the moment. My very present is improving, so future will be improved too. And at home, I feel very comfortable now that I have this training, thanks to these safe spaces. This is also the case of Kadri Rakia, 25, married and mother of two. I'm very happy to have this job because today I can sew clothes for myself, for my friends, my family, and then it will allow me to earn a living, especially. So I'm very happy my life has changed completely because I know that today I can do a few things that will help me in life. We find ourselves now at the CSI, the Wadata Integrated Social Center. As everywhere else in the Tahua region, the Campaign for Family Planning and Reproductive Health Services is organized for three weeks. The women come here this morning for a consultation, and different contraceptive methods will be offered to them for free. In the area of maternal and reproductive health, the integrated health centers are supported by the UNFPA and the Ministry of Public Health, with donations in contraceptives and vital medicine for reproductive health, with capacity building of staff in reproductive health, with awareness raising in view of the attendance at health centers, through husband schools, with health facilities for basic or emergency obstetric and neonatal care. The UNFPA supports around 20 integrated health centers in the Tahoa region only. In this center, up to 120 deliveries are performed per month. This woman, who is about to be taken to the delivery room, is at her sixth pregnancy. After the delivery, we will proceed to family planning. If she agrees, we will do it in the delivery room. If not, we'll ask her to come the week after. Then we'll insist again for the family planning until she says yes. There are many advantages in family planning, and some of them don't know that you can get pregnant again right after the delivery. That's why we have many options to suggest to them, to help them not to get pregnant immediately after. The innovation of this third UNFPA campaign is the principle of tutoring, developed under the leadership of the Ministry of Public Health, with experienced midwives recruited full-time as tutors to supervise providers at the integrated health centers. We went to the maternity ward of the rural commune of Bazaga district of Birkin Koni, in the region of Tawa. 
On location, the tutor is observing the activities of the midwives in training and makes corrections when necessary. I'm in charge of all actions that concern reproductive health, so I'm here to supervise them and coach them during the whole process. If there are some strong points, I encourage them, and if there are additional efforts to make, I lead them towards that goal. So today, as you see, we are at the section for women who have come for prenatal consultations and family planning services. And as you arrived, you could see that there was a woman who came here for the first time for family planning services. So under my supervision, she has asked some questions to the woman, uh, asking her what types of contraception methods she knows. And she listed three, the pill, the injection, and the long-term method, the implants. And then she showed her the box where there are all the existing methods. She showed her how to use them and when to use them. Ultimately, she chose the injection. So she'll ask her about her previous contraception methods in order to make sure about the compatibility before administrating that method to her. Because if there are any contradictions, we need to proceed again to this personal interview in order to convince her to change the contraception method. Because uh, when it comes to family planning, it's a personal choice and we shouldn't choose for anybody. After six days of supervision, the tutor will go to another integrated health center to continue the training. On a mis en place un système de tutorat, comme vous le savez dans la plupart de nos pays, la qualité. As you may know, in most of our countries, we have set up a type of tutoring approach. Regarding the quality training, there are many health training schools, but still, as technology evolves, there are some nurses and midwives who don't know how to proceed to some cases because of a lack of good training. As they are recruited despite this lack of good training, under the leadership of the Ministry of Health and the support of the UNFPA, we have set up this tutoring method, which consists of hiring 40 and 50 midwives, each of whom must have necessarily made more than 1,000 deliveries to be recruited. They must also have placed a certain number of jettles, among others. And thanks to that approach, we have about 50 midwives who are here with operational indemnities. They will be sent to the health centers where they will stay for a week to supervise the situation. That's what we call the training evaluation, a kind of capacity building and reinforcement. If everything is okay, they may move to another health center. Currently, we'll do it through this campaign, but we are also intending to go further. That's gonna be post-campaign activities which we will carry out in all the regions of the country. We will take the evaluation in a year, and I'm convinced the results will be positive. Through this campaign, the UNFPA and the Nigerian government intend to create an environment capable of allowing the development of human capital and ultimately to accelerate the demographic dividend. We have innovated in this current campaign. Before, we just used to come and equip the health centers, train the midwives and buy other useful devices, provide some products and then stay aside and wait for the results, which often did not work. We have gone to see those I call the forgotten, those who are the traditional leaders in the community level. The challenge was how to bring the community level to ask for our services. You have been to Ilela, where you have seen more than 200 village chiefs who were with the head of Canton, and you heard the strong message he carried out. You see, he took two major administrative decrees because his function as head of Canton allows him to do so. The first prohibits the marriage of girls before the age of 18, and the second totally forbids birth at home. And he has even proceeded to the annulment of many marriages. You heard that in his speech. So today we are doing our best to bring him convince his other fellow content chiefs for them to proceed the same way. 
So the innovation is how to bring these Canton and village chiefs, as well as godmothers, to create the need and send a message. That's important. And as you see, some ministers have come to accompany us, the First Lady the same. We are in the last line in involving the whole population to go towards the result, and I believe that contrary to the two previous campaigns, the result will be better. As a result, we are expecting a lot of improvement for more subscription in family planning, in women being assisted in delivery, Niger is about 30 to 36 percent. We want to go up to 80 percent. The consult the d'accouchement assisté. On veut aller vers les 80 percent. Following this campaign in the Tahua region, the fourth campaign for repositioning family planning, strengthening the fight against maternal mortality, promoting schooling and school retention for girls, will take place next year in 2020 in the Zinder region.